Hey everybody, this is Perch, and I have, uh, I've been sitting on this one for a few days. Um, it's Saga, Brian K. Vaughn, Fiona Staples, and kind of looking at this series, and it's, it's a, it's a hard one. You're, you're, it, this one is just different from the ones we've been doing before. Obviously, I've done numbers for a bunch of DC series, a bunch of Marvel series. And uh, the, what you notice about Saga is it it's just different kind of across the board. And there's a bunch of, of lessons to take out of it. Uh, but it, it you're definitely going to see a different curve, different numbers, different everything when it comes to Saga. And now Saga, of course, is an image book. It's an indie book, and it's got a lot of things different about it. It takes regular hiatuses. We're going to talk about that. Um, its trade paperback sales are, are strong, but it, it's. It, I, I want to present a bunch of these numbers to you, but I want to admit just right out the gate that uh, I'm, I'm running numbers for The Walking Dead, for uh, Black Science, a book I really enjoyed from, from Rick Remender back in the day. Uh, there's, there's a bunch of of indie comics that I'm trying to kind of suss out here so I can see if I can get some commonality to the curve because DC and Marvel, you can draw some definite conclusions against each other. And the only real conclusion I have from Saga or, you know, in, in comparison to them is that they just, the rules are very different. So let me get into to what we have here. So first off the bat, we have 54 issues of Saga. It's been on hiatus now for I, going on two years. Um, I think going on two years, this, this, this last pandemic year, that's actually 10 years compressed into one, it, it, it muddles the mind a little bit, but here's our basic curve. Our comic saga number one started out at 37,641 copies. Now, what you'll notice immediately from this curve is that the real name of the game is definitely some gains, but more or less just holding sales. So where Marvel and DC are concerned, you get atrophy. Uh, immediately for everything. I mean, the exceptions prove the rule. Civil War, White Knight, uh, somewhat Immortal Hulk, you see this, uh, this this bucking of that trend. But but 99% of the titles all atrophy. They all start up high and then they go down low. And the drop really depends on how many variant covers and incentive schemes and everything else there is. But Saga did not have those same things. Uh, so it starts at 37,641 copies, which is very good for an indie. So as an as a brand new property, nobody knows anything about it. It's it's coming out. Obviously, Brian K. Vaughn is a big name. Fiona Staples is also a name, but but doesn't have the kind of the you know this series would help cement her. I think as a as a uh, indie you know top talent uh, in the minds of people. She had the talent always, but um, it it thirty seven thousand is a great starting place. Now just we'll get there, but you you may have a question. What's going on with issue forty three? Why did that suddenly pop up? Well. Uh, we'll, we'll get there, but basically that issue was the one where Image sold it for uh, a quarter, 25 cents. This comic is $2.99, uh, and that's that's kind of how it, how it plots out for all the other issues. But there's a bunch of interesting conclusions. So if we just go down the line here, um, this right here, these little dotted lines, this is where the book took a hiatus. And when I say a hiatus, I mean usually, I think it's three to four months. So every six issues, it would pause. For a while and this is of course very unusual and not not as unusual with the indies but of course this is not what you see with marvel and dc but you see these pauses and what's interesting in these pauses is by and large you don't see a drop you see a very steady curve i mean the only kind of argument you have for it coming back is you see a blip on issue seven this is the first time it came back from a hiatus when it's starting to get some real buzz and then um, kind of the ending arc, uh, issue 30, you saw a blip, but, but generally speaking, uh, this, the, the audience just retains, you see, you see some jumps, but generally it's, it's just kind of retention of audience. You do see every arc seems to gain a couple people for a while for the first couple. And I think the best way to look at this is this looks like, you know, TV shows. This looks like what happened with game of Thrones, where it was picking up viewers season by season by word of mouth. And I think that's probably the best thing you can kind of, if you're trying to wrap your head around what this is like, it's like that. So if we look at issue two, issue, you know, issue seven started our second kind of arc, uh, 46,000 gained almost 10,000 subs. Um, then you get to 55,000 for the third arc. So again, almost another, yeah, about 9,000, uh, uh, customers here, 9,000 buys. And then you stay pretty steady. Uh, this is where I'm just trying to make the, the bubbles fit. You go 55, you gain a hundred, you know, that's, it's, that's an awkward, I shouldn't have drawn it that way, but 
Oh, well. Um, and then you kind of hover there. So you're really at the 55,000 mark, um, gaining slightly. And then as we go across, we go down to 53. And something happens definitely between, you know, the, I would say, issue 25 and issue 30. Um, the pause was not longer. We did get a different story development where the child was kind of moved over into another area. And it did we did settle back down. So we peaked at 55 and then we dropped back down to 53 and then 50. And then we have this 25 cent issue uh, for 240,000 copies sold, maybe. So this is where we, we don't completely know how many copies are sold. There was an interview where they said 240,000 copies sold, but then there was another interview saying, we can't reveal the numbers. It may be it may be much higher than that, which is like I, okay, I don't know what to do with that. But the number that we did here was 240, so we're going with 240, and that's that's the best we can do with with what we know. But this was a kind of an outlier. It was was confusing. Um, after that issue, though, um, we definitely moved uh, then back down to 38,000, and then finally 36. So at, as as the series has on its pause, issue 54, the last issue we've seen, it's sitting at 36,000. So it's it's just a little bit more than a thousand copies less than its first issue. Now, first off, I bet that's surprising to a lot of people because I think the story we've heard is that Saga just sells and sells and sells and keeps going up. And definitely in my shop, it sold great. It was a it was a very good seller. Um, but there was this this belief, and I think it's this these numbers bear it out a little bit of while it's a really strong seller for an indie, it is still an indie. And so I think, you know, the I, I, I would suspect there's a lot of comic shops where Saga doesn't sell at all. And then you get to the big metro areas and it does sell. And I, I, I suspect you, you, you have some places where, like for me, Saga is moving 100 copies. And for others, Saga is moving two. And I think there's there's probably a pretty stark difference in some shops. But the, the headline here is that, again, something happened certainly between issue 25 and 30 that started it off its growth. And then again, this, um, and we're going to get to it, this, this issue that was 25 cents. Um, if you look at the way that started and ended, they did this big promotion. The reason why they did 25 cents was to get a bunch of new people in, but it, it amounted to 38,000. Uh, so it actually gave up quite a few of its regular readers, which is, which is curious. So Backing away, and what I'm going to do here is uh, let me just nuke the uh, 240,000 out of the picture and show you a trend line. How's this comic trended over time? Well, it's trended from 50,000 to 49,000. So basically, um, and, and here, so then bringing the picture back, just so you can kind of see see what that looked like a little bit more close up. It, it, it provides an interesting curve here. You see more of the dramatics to the curve, but all this curve is happening in the space of about 20,000 copies, which is, again, from what you've been probably used to now seeing these videos of Marvel and DC, very different. So, okay, so our trend line uh, goes from 50 to 49, which is a 2% trend decrease. So still a decrease. Um, again, I, I think the story that a lot of us have heard is that Saga was uh, just continually growing and selling more and more and more, and it, it was one of the top titles. It's not doing that. It had a, a beginning, a middle, and an end to it. Uh, and of course, we'll see when it comes back out of hiatus how it how it handles. But two percent that is success. Again, for a business that is about atrophy, it is definitely success. But it's a puzzling look, both because I think the assumption is maybe it was doing better than this, and also uh, it it looks nothing like Marvel and DC. So here's a couple more things to throw at you, kind of about this book. Now, first off, issues one, two, and three were returnable. Um, and that did seem to set the series off on a good foot. If you look at how it grew on issue four and five, look, if you look at what it did, that first three issues being returnable probably gave a lot of shops confidence that this was an indie book to invest in and to, to go with and to order. And I think that that was a big deal. And then, like I mentioned, that issue 43 was only 25 cents, where the normal price was $2.99. So overall, though, I mean, this is the picture we get. So, and this is why... Uh, this analysis. So why did they do the 25 cent issue? Well, they did it because they wanted to, you know, get, get word of mouth, get some marketing, get some attention for this title. Now look at this, this book, the book is falling at this point. So you have it down to just above 40,000 copies before they do this 25 cent issue. And so somewhere in the, the marketing and the, the promotion or what they're doing with the image, somebody came up with the conclusion, Hey, let's try putting this issue out cheap 
so we can bring in new readers, you know, do this again, expose us to an audience. And certainly it did. You know, there were a lot of copies ordered, um, but it is questionable how many copies were actually sold because uh, this picture shows us that this, this promotion basically did nothing. You know, the issue that followed out of the free issue, start of a new arc, went right back to where it was before, before the, the, I keep saying free, 25 cent issue. It went right back to where it was. And then it continued to drop. So this idea that this, uh, let's drop the price and it'll bring up a bunch of new readers, it didn't work. And this is an interesting picture. And, and so we go to just some numbers here. I mean, if you look at issue 42 and what it sold and then 43, 44, you see issue 42 before the 25 cent issue made roughly 127,000. Now, I, I've just to explain these numbers, this is literally just multiplying the orders by 299. Okay, this isn't, an, an, which is an unfair way to do it. Obviously, there's a cut to the store, there's a cut to the uh, to image, there's a cut to the creators, there's a cut to the distributor, there's all these other factors here. This is selling to a store, not customers, but just I'm using it for illustration for the math. We look at this uh, 25 cent issue and it made 62,500. Okay. So it made less, of course, it was priced less, uh, even though it sold a lot more copies. And then when we see it go back to the 299 price for issue 44, we're at 128,000. So we gained, you know, basically $1,400 total. Uh, not that's not significant, and so it, it does indicate that as a marketing scheme to get it uh, to get more people into the book, it did not work. At least that's a conclusion I draw. Um, which begs the question, how many customers actually got this comic shops ordered huge on it because it was cheaper. Um, did they, did, are there just stacks and stacks of these things in comic shops? Uh, I knew there wasn't mine. And I suspect that you'll see just tons of issue 43 hanging out because even though it was cheaper, people didn't buy it, which, which begs another question. So we, we've had the conversation on this channel many times about why don't you just lower the price? Comic books are too expensive. And my answer is, I agree with you. They are too expensive. And I agree with you that the price should be lowered. It absolutely should. However, um, it, it, you know, looking at the saga experiment, and I'm going to show you Walking Dead here in a week or two, which did the same thing. Um, the, the lowering of the price, now granted, it's just for one issue. Um, it didn't bring in new readers. So I think that comic prices do need to come down. I absolutely do. But there also, there has to be another thing to it. There has to be another, uh, it can't just be lower the price. You got to figure out how to get people back into the shop or sell these things other places where that audience is. If you just lower the price, I think you're going to see disaster. I, I, it, it, the, there's no evidence that people flock to shops and buy more. Um, and I know that's controversial. I know that people hard, aggressively have disagreed with me in the past. And that's why I'll show you Walking Dead. I'll show you some of the other comics that did this 25 cent thing. The numbers do just don't bear that out. It doesn't suggest that if you just, if you just lower the price, everybody will show up. It does not appear that that is true at all. So I think it, good. So lowering the price is kind of the easy part. What's the next part? What's the, uh, What's the next part to the plan? The next part to the plan has to be promotion, uh, distribution. I mean, there, there just has to be something else. And that's the harder bit to talk about. So uh, one thing that we hear, so, so anyway, we're back looking at this picture. Um, here we have it, you know, an interesting little arc. Again, not, not what I had expected um, when, because the story I've been told is, is just a straight line up that Saga Chiefs keeps gaining, uh, gaining readers and gaining subs and, and just uh, more and more sales. But that is not the case. Uh, it did top out here uh, basically uh, under 60 and then then fall back down again. And, and then now so people will say, hey, what about trades? So trades are a big deal. Trades are what sustain Saga. And, and you're right largely about that. So what I'm going to show you here are the sales of trades. And I have to kind of do some funny math at the end just because we, we run out of data. But uh, issue the first volume of Saga sold 15,055 copies. And what's interesting about this is look, you know, the first month always does better for trades. It falls below 5,000, but then it bumps back up and it continues to hover around the 5,000 mark for a long time. It's it started to show some decline, you know, when we're about four years into things. But overall, 
the issue, what the volume one of Saga has been the strongest selling trade for Saga. But wait a minute, you know, here's here's volume two. And as you'll see here, volume two gained 3,000, uh, you know, buys in its first month. And then it falls and it drops. But look at how the orange line starts to separate from the blue line. The blue line being volume one continues to kind of hover in there pretty solid. The orange line drops faster. What does this mean? Well, it means people are coming in, they're buying volume one, and they're not converting all the, the people who buy volume one into buyers of volume two. Then we get volume three, ex almost exactly the same picture. Another 3,000 gained. And look at what it does. The gray line matches the orange line almost immediately. And why this is significant is, again, the, the volume three is coming out several months later. So it quickly gets to the same numbers as volume two, meaning it's, it's basically falling off faster. And so we look at volume four. Oh, big shock. 3,000 3, more purchases in, in the first month. And then once again, look at the yellow line. It immediately goes and blends together with the orange and the gray. Whereas the volume uh, one sales continue to outperform when we get into uh, later parts in its life. So all this tells us is, is basically um, volume one sells. It picks up a bunch of, of new readers. It picks up people who are collecting it. Some of those buy volume two, and then some of those buy volume three. It has a very stable, very consistent audience, but it's, it's slowly picking up new readers, but it's not necessarily gaining them as fast as you might think. So then we get to uh, volume five and we see 29,000. Don't let it flip. You know, don't let the, the, I'm running out of space there at the top of the screen. I want you to be able to see the art. Uh, but basically it gains 5,000. So this is the highest jump we get during this period. And, um, but you still see, and now we've got a, a dark blue line and a light blue line. So it might be kind of hard to tell, but you see that this, this volume five immediately, uh, it falls faster than, than any of the others. And once it's had its first sale, it immediately gets down to where volumes two, three, and four are. And then finally, we have uh, volume six here, and we only have, you know, basically four months of data to look at, but uh, we see two things. Number one, it's dropped. So the first month sales are, are now lower than the volume five. So it's, it's, not, it's not performing as strong, and yet the drop is as strong. So we have seen volume uh, seven, eight, and nine uh, come out. Uh, but I just, I don't have enough data through the months to kind of show you what all this looks like. But what I do have is the first month sales, and this is what the picture looks like. So just like Saga itself, you see uh, it peak and then fall. So you see it peak up at 29,000 copies there with volume five, that's its highest. And then the first month sales drop. And at least from what I've been able to see with volumes uh, seven, eight, nine, uh, you see the exact same pattern where, you know, volume one, consistently outsells all the others. And, and that makes sense because people are, are coming into the series, they're gonna start somewhere, they're gonna start with volume one. But it's an interesting picture uh, of the audience and it's interesting how the trades mirror the floppy sales. Because one of those things that you hear people say all the time is, oh, the floppy sales are dead, trades are where it's at, trades are, trades are the future. Uh, sounds great, but hey, what do you know? The curve for trades and the curve for floppies turn out to be the same. Hmm, interesting how that works. But anyway, some interesting analysis. Saga, a very different picture from Marvel and DC. Brian K. Vaughn, Fiona Staples. Uh, it's just interesting to see the math uh, run out this way. And I hope uh, I hope this was interesting for you. It's a very different picture from you're used to. Hey, I hope everybody's having a great uh, Christmas Eve and you have a, I hope I get this right. I'm recording this in advance, but this should go out Christmas Eve. Um, have a great holiday, a great time. Uh, enjoy the time off. If you're able to have some time off, it'd be great. If not, Thanks for supporting the channel. Throw a like, throw a comment, please. I'd love that. Sub to the channel if you haven't already. Would appreciate that too. But most importantly, and I mean it, thanks for listening.